Hello. <laughs> did I did I overcompensate with this? Or is this is this good? Okay. So about to get started. We're about to to see. We're about to have Mr. Sakurai, Sakurai San, if you will, impart his wisdom upon us. What would it be? Who could it be? So could be Wallace from Wallace and Gromit. It could be Alf. Could be Tony Hawk. Bilbo Baggins. Sam and Matt, yeah, Pepsi Man. All very possible. All very possible. Still got uh, a few more, a uh, few more minutes, about seven more minutes. So I'm just gonna be on the screen in silence and talk to you for a little bit. I, I may have started a little, a little too early. I didn't know how long things were gonna take me. I played like ten minutes of music. <laughs> But, you know, better safe than sorry, I suppose. Well, I meant silence, except for me. All right, all right, three fingers. He's holding three fingers up, right? Possible explanations for this. No More Heroes 3. Half-Life 3. Um, three for Wario. Like, he's holding up the Wario hand. Sonic 3, yes. Knuckles. Uh, of course... You know, he's also doing it like like this, so it could it could be an E for um elf practice. <laughs> Which of course means Rudolph. E for Erio, yes. It could be Erio. Of course, you also got to keep in mind that E is the last letter of Wallace. So that kind of reaffirms the whole Wallace and Gromit theory. But the question is, will it be just Wallace or... Will Gromit follow behind him like ice, like the ice climbers? All right, we got about four more minutes. <laughs> four more minutes. Oh, uh, yep, Freddy Freaker. Could be Freddy Freaker. Could be Eldard from Star Fox 2, the entire planet. Alright, so. Sakurai's doing this. So you could be like this, which means it would be Batman.
bringing his move set from Batman NES Return slash Revenge of the Joker Arkham Asylum. Very very possible. Very very possible. And yeah, he Langton brings up something very good. Oh yes, yeah, so that's a that's a plausible one. It's you. He just reaches into the screen or reaches out of the screen and pulls you in because truly you're never safe. Escape. Escape from the city, Shadow the Hedgehog. Can't be Rouge the Bat, though, because only good boys and girls are allowed in Smash Brothers. Mm. Mike Jones. Nah. Felicia from Dark... No, I told you, only good boys and girls are allowed in Smash Brothers. Felicia's right out. Though she is a nun, apparently. I think that's part of the Dark Stalkers lore. So does it balance out? I don't know. Add to the line to the line. I assume you're supposed to pronounce that like add to the line. That's how I've always said it, but it, like, but it's spelled kind of like Adele, Adele Dazeem, uh, Dick Dastardly. Yep. Yeah. With, uh, with the pigeon, of course. Okay, one more minute. Uh, Biggest Dickus from Monty Python. Dick Tracy. <laughs> Don't worry, you should you won't have to put up with this much longer. It's about to start. Uh Rich Evans, aka Dick the Birthday Boy. from the Red Letter Media franchise. Oh, there we, here we go. Hello everyone, I'm Masahiro Sakurai, director of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate from Sora Limited. Hello. We'll be using today's showcase to give you a first look at our next DLC fighter. Actually, hardly anyone knows what we'll be announcing today, even among Nintendo staff worldwide. The development team and other stakeholders have been working on this fighter with the utmost secrecy. Which means other Nintendo staff around the globe will only start making preparations for release after the showcase has been broadcast. <laughs> so it won't be available right away. Please understand that it will take a little time. I was wondering if he was I going to do the Nintendo right away. I will be surprised to see this and say, wow, really? <laughs> so let's all share in the fun of getting our hands on the latest information. However, even if you say, that's not the character I was picturing, I hope you don't have any hard feelings. <laughs> We've prepared a fighter reveal video. Once it starts, I think you'll figure out who it is pretty quickly. Now, let's do this. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Oh god, please. The time has finally come to unleash the forbidden spell of Zaharas upon our enemies! Oh. 
Oh what God, are you please! Thinking? Charging right into an enemy's trap. As you and I are one, I too am trapped within this void. Please no. In time, our hearts and minds will cease to be. My heart and mind is already ceasing to, to be. Die? I thought as much. I also do not wish to die. And yet... There is no other choice. You must join Smash. Huh? Join Smash Brothers already! What in the world are you waiting for? So joining Smash consumes even the darkness itself! Why, God? Alright, eight! Eight of them! There's eight now! Too many swordsmen are there? And you, you wield the sword as well? What will you do? Huh. So that is how you plan to Oh, at least we have the waifu version, so I guess. I reward your cleverness this time. How is this? Oh. Of anyone, you should be able to handle the hero's relics. With air and fire, strike with superior reach. I mean, at least it's a spear. Use Amir's overwhelming power. Unleash the blinding speed of Failnot. Along with the sword of the creator, each weapon matches a direction. Your will and mine be now as one. To you, both sides of time are revealed. Through Smash, show the world. Boo, you stink. Yes, there you have it. Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses is joining the battle. More like by Fire Emblem Three Houses was released just last summer, so it's still very new. Let's we'll see Even what the so, chat you'll saying. You'll be able to play as them in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This release is planned for January 28th. You'll have instant <laughs> access if you have the Super Smash Bros. <laughs> so, Ultimate. So many Smash. resident and sleepers. And it will also be available for purchase individually. In case you're not familiar with Fire Emblem or Three Houses, I'll explain a few things, so don't worry. First off, what is Fire Emblem? Does anybody not know at this point? It's really hard to pronounce in Japanese. It's the like... The producer said it's okay if I just say Fire Emblem. But it's just like... It, if you don't write Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem police will come and get you, so please be careful. The series' first entry launched in Japan on the Famicom in 1990. You could say it was a pioneer in the genre of tactical role-playing games. You might be wondering what makes it particularly tactical. Well, it's tactical in that it simulates combat. You can think of it as moving pieces in a board game, or in other words, a game in which you advance units across a grid and battle. When we talk about tactical games of that era, there were lots of ones in which you'd command tanks, aircrafts, and so on. 
But Fire Emblem was unique because each unit was a specific character, sort of like in role-playing games. Plus, something made it stand out from other Nintendo products. Gotta pull him. Characters could permanently die. <laughs> That's pretty direct language though, so perhaps we should just say they're sleeping with the fishes. But really, if a character fell in battle, you'd lose that unit. They'd be gone and you couldn't use them again. Recent entries in the series maintain this concept of permadeath to some degree in classic mode and what have you. But a lot of games now allow strategic withdrawals, so to speak. In the older games, your units would really be gone, never to be mentioned again. Scary. I wish they were never to be mentioned again still. Like Chronicles of War, with increasingly distinct characters and engrossing scenarios. Several characters also appear in the Super Smash Bros. series, and six of the seven can use a counterattack. It's their down special. Yeah, eight now. There's actually a reason for this. When I was considering how to incorporate Fire Emblem Fighters into Super Smash Bros. Melee, I thought it might be interesting to reflect the turn-based nature of the original game. First comes your opponent's turn. They attack, and you counter. Next comes your turn. Yeah, they should wait their turn. Instead of getting eight! And now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is the 17th game in the series. People who aren't Japanese in particular might be thinking, 17 games? There are that many? Well, if you include Fire Emblem Heroes in the remakes, but you don't include the Satellaview game, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE, and Fire Emblem Warriors, then it comes out to 17 games. Let's try saying them in the Fire Emblem Can You Say It Challenge. I'll give it a try. え、暗黒流と光の剣、え、外伝、猛将の謎、聖戦の契約、トラキア776、え、封印の剣、え、聖魔の功績、赤月の女神、え、神眼黒流、新猛将、え、覚醒、異風、黄色、エコーズ、風
Sakurai rambles on about Fire Emblem for 30 minutes uh, thing seems to confirm to me that there is perhaps a little bit of a bias, just a little bit. So we're filming two months in advance of this video's release. Right now, it's actually November. Okay. Therefore, some of what I'm about to show you might differ a bit from the finished version. As always, I'm using a special in-game camera and such for demonstration purposes. Here I go. Oh, oh, oh boundary break. <laughs> so, this is our new fighter, Byla. Sadly, they're lacking in mobility. It's maybe a bit better than Robin's, but that's about all you can say for them. Throws are not their strong point either. Their grab lacks range. But actually, you could say that they're distance demon. The hero's relic they use changes depending on the direction you input with the stick. Each of the hero's relics is a weapon that appears <laughs> I can't in the believe you, you clipped something. They look like bones, and there's a reason for that. First, let's talk about the weapon Byleth uses for upward inputs, the Sword hmm, of the Creator. Pardon me. Sword, the of, sword the of the Creator. creator is Byleth's default weapon. They use it for flurry attacks and tilt attacks, such as down tilt attacks. It looks a lot like a uh, Simon's Whip, honestly. They also use the sword for dash attacks and other moves. For their up smash attack, they'll whip the sword upward to launch enemies in the air. The whip the sword. For their up air attack, they'll wave the whip sword overhead. Why didn't he just have a whip then? The hit detection for this attack lasts for a relatively long time. The up special move is really something. The sword extends like this, allowing you to do things like this. It was pretty terrifying how I knocked him into the air with that attack. And in addition, you can do awful things like this. That said, you'll launch opponents upward until their damage reaches a certain percentage. Exceed that percentage and you'll need to be careful. You may find it helpful to mid-air dodge. I've already shown this, but you can also use it to latch onto edges. So, like so most that's the up special. Now, for the sideways inputs. This is Erdvar, the same name as the weapon from... I'm sorry, can you say that again? A bread bar. First, we'll go through the forward and back air attacks. As you can see, they have a long reach. Like so. Marth's air attack keeps opponents in check too, right? <laughs> bread, bro. If Byleth does the same thing, you'd win out, so you should be able He's to He's like Simon it. if Simon was anime instead yeah, of He-Man. No, wait, that's, uh, that's probably just Richter, range. isn't it? It'll connect even from here. Also, if you add an upward tilt, it will be stronger. And if you've knocked an opponent down, the side attack won't hit unless you add a downward tilt to aim for them. By the way, the tip of the lance is more powerful. The shaft part is weaker. <laughs> I'm a child, I'm sorry. So it's not suited to close combat. It won't deal much damage, and it won't launch opponents far. Shoutouts to that, uh, that knight rule, guy in the background. Hit with the blade part I like that guy. Or downward in this case. Next, the side special move. <laughs> Byleth will simply Getting swing the lance like this, notifications. but again, it has excellent reach. For example, even when your opponent is at this distance, it'll still hit. Actually, you can do a smash attack to charge forward a little, like this. But as you'd expect, it can be easily shielded, so be careful. <laughs> Use it in mid-air and you'll carve up a large area. Returning to the side air attacks from earlier, they have great horizontal reach, but they lack verticality. So this complements it well. Although you'll be vulnerable when you land. 
Now, for the downward inputs. For these, Byleth will use an axe called Emir. It's named after a weapon that appears in Ugaritic myth. First, the down air attack. It really is strong. You can try for a meteor effect with this attack. Is it next dropping down smash attack? Like frames on the stream for you guys? Back and forth. As you can see, it has a great deal of launch power. Looks a little choppy, but it might just be the preview the window. Violet channels all their energy into a devastating strike. It's I will say, similar to the Falcon Punch, but here's what makes it different. When readying the move, there's a super armor effect. Yeah, I, I mean, I used uh, display capture. I couldn't figure out any other way to get it to capture, right? Just so you know, if you execute a Falcon Punch at about the same time, it plays out. So yeah, that might be it. It's a bit slower than the Falcon Punch, but due to the super armor effect, you have the advantage. I thought that was like the My Hero Academia song. Another notable aspect is that it lets you pass through platforms. While you're charging up, you can I will say, uh, like silver lining, at least area. it's not just straight up a it swordsman again. Jump, but you could use it as a surprise attack. I'm, I will I will say that. Also, you can turn around during the move. Like, I don't, I don't want to be, like, the entirely negative. So if an opponent runs behind you during the move, you can quickly change direction. Though, I, I also don't want to lie to you and say, like, to land a hit with this move. Oh, yes. Oh yes, Fire Emblem 8, Fire Emblem character. I am so glad I, I got up at 8 a.m. for this. It's as if the quaking of the ground launches them. By the way, earlier I talked a little bit about the other Fire Emblem characters' moves. I don't recommend using this down special against fighters from the Fire Emblem series, because you'll just get loads of counters. It hits with that much power in a single attack. Counters can actually multiply the power of blocked attacks. And using it's just another character for you to like play this, as whenever you select random, oh god. Honestly, I don't know, I don't know if I'm gonna be in a huge hurry to buy this one. Which shares its name with the bow from the Knights of the Round Table. It only appears in a few neutral moves. You've got the neutral. Like on one hand, it's another fighter, but on the other hand, I, I don't know. It's just like, should I spend money on something I'm not enthusiastic about? It's also easy to create certain combos with it. And with the neutral special, you'll let loose an arrow. I mean, I don't really need. I, I don't really need to play as Violet. But there are a few noteworthy aspects to this bow. First. The biggest difference between this bow and Lynx is that once you enter the command, you can keep charging until it's ready. You can't release it partway through the charge, so when it does fire, the arrow travels at high speed. It's also very powerful. That said, you can still cancel out of the stance using the shield button. Like I said, if you, if you like Fire Emblem, good for you. Stance. It works up until this point, but if you keep holding the button, You'll unleash a powerful arrow that looks like a beam of light. Hmm, where have I seen that? You can perform before? this move by keeping the button held down. You charge up power like so, charge a bit more, and then fire. But again, you'll need to take care when using this move. For one, when you've powered up the move to its max, there's no way to cancel out of it. I Not keep thinking this is the freaking In other All words, Might theme song. <laughs> So you see, a situation like this is pretty terrible. A situation like this is pretty terrible. Once you've entered the stand, you won't be able to do anything. Which means it's quite the risky attack to use against fighters who have a move with a reflector effect. But you could always just aim into the fray, as it is, after all, a long-range move. Letting you deal a sudden blow to opponents. So, you need to think carefully when using this projectile weapon. By this final smash is called Progenitor God Ruptured Heaven. In the original game, there's a move called Ruptured Heaven. His final this smash is, is called God Machine, oh, God Car Machine O and Airy. As you can see, you team up with the mysterious Sophus and launch an attack together. 
You team up with the mysterious sloth from the Goonies. Now, let's talk about the color variations. Oh, it's God. set up so that the default and odd-numbered color variations are male, while the even-numbered ones are female. So, like, every... However, every the third, fourth, and fifth colors are, as you can see, reminiscent of the house leaders. Those of you who played the original game will, of course, understand what I'm referring to. Oh, she's got some, like, Princess Elise legs going on with the on red stocking-looking thing. And the seventh and eighth variations have a different hair color, which is based on unicorn, based on something that like occurs in the, course of the original game story. Didn't we see this variation in the final Smash? <laughs> Sakurai, when have you ever cared about spoiling anything? Next, I'll introduce the stage. For this one, we of course tried to recreate the place where you spend most of the game. Garrick Mock Monastery. This the is fifth how Garrick Fighter Mach Pass Monastery character is, laid out is Twilight Sparkle. From these, we chose to have it cycle through the Marketplace, Reception Hall, Bridge, and Cathedral, all in one stage. It's the type of stage that rotates through different areas, such as these four. Let me introduce each of the guests that appear in these four areas. The first area is the marketplace. I oh, think there this is, is where a lot of people come to do their shopping. Wow, you The don't guests say. that appear here are students of the Blue Lion's house. Dimitri, Dedu, and Ingrid. Dedu. Not Dimitri, Dedu. Dudu, or Ingrid. <laughs> their names are a bit difficult to say. They're largely from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Since it's a kingdom, that means they have a monarch. For that reason, I guess you could say Dimitri is the future king. He had quite the difficult life and may or may not end up with just one eye. He's an unfortunate one, that one. There are vendors on either side. In the original game, these are important booths where you buy all sorts of things, but... Uh, here you can break It's 9 a.m., give me a break. <laughs> if you do break them, the stage will expand to the left and right. I wonder where people will buy their supplies now. Uh -huh. And in the background, you can see the gatekeeper. Yes, the gatekeeper! You can pass through this area in Fire Emblem Three Houses, and you end up talking to him a lot. Moving through these areas is possible thanks to this mysterious platform. Just when it seems like you've come to a stop, the, the flying light bull crashing back down. You've broken through the ceiling and slammed into the building. You the go the to Gryffindor hall, House. Eldar, Dorothea and Petra of the Black Eagles. Take note, it's not spelled Edelgard. They're from the Adresian Empire. Wow, the waifus. And as such, they embrace their military might. Edelgard is one of the characters who is central to the conflict. Depending on the path you take, she'll go through some terrible ordeals. I'm going through a terrible You'll ordeal. You'll notice there are prominent chandeliers above the stage. It's possible to knock them down. However, Violet can't actually reach it, even though it's their stage. <laughs> you can reach it with other fighters, though. So, it's nice if you can work your way up there by getting lucky and being launched up, or perhaps by using another fighter as a stepping stone. There we go. I made it. And you can knock it down. Knock it down. Also, you can break this table. Like so. But why? Why would you do that? Just like the sign that reads Fooding Kazan in the Suzaku Castle stage, it can break if you launch the opponent into it at close range. Next up, the bridge. The camera rotates 90 degrees, creating this long area. It's very wide indeed. The bridge of Elden? It's similar to the bridge of Elden stage. The guests are from the Golden Deer, Claude, Hilda, and Lawrence. They belong to the Leicester Alliance. Purple. Because it's an alliance of many noble families, you could say that they have a wide assortment of members. And Claude is the sharpest of the bunch. 
Incidentally, both Claude and Hilda Lawrence. are the names of characters that appear in Genealogy of the Holy War. The Harry Potter, you go to Golden Deer series. House. I guess once you've reached the 17th game and are creating 40 characters for each new entry, you're bound to get a bit of name overlap. The naming process must be tough. Hey, it looks like the Pegasus Knight is busy training. As for the bridge's design, it's just a long pathway, plain and simple. As for the bridge's design, it's just a bridge. At the edges of the I mean, what did you expect? You could also say it's a place where the fail knot really shines, and in this sense, I think it suits the Golden Deer perfectly. The last area is the cathedral only with some platforms you can pass through. The cathedral. The guests appearing in the cathedral are Sedeth, Flane, and Rhea. Oh. There's Rhea. Sedeth, who appears to have an extreme. Rhea strong is one of the moons of Saturn. Flame. She seems to be under the protection of him and Rhea, who you can see fighting during the I opening mean, of Fire I guess Emblem Three Houses. Saturn is relevant to, to All me. All three have character quirks related to their true identities. I feel that Flame might be saying shush at this point, so I'll leave it at that. This is a simple area of the stage. All it has are these platforms. Being the last area, it may be a place where some intense battles will be waged. It'll cycle through each location in about two and a half minutes. Okay, today I always we'll have read that name is Blythe. With the DLC team pitted against Fire Emblem protagonists from throughout the ages. That'll give us precisely five players per side. <laughs> right, here we go, Joker. Precisely five players per side. Joker! You might be missing a few. And Hero! What? Gee, we really made a lot, huh? Banjo! What are you, what are you doing? By now, I think you know what I'm doing. But basically, I'm trying to defeat all five opponents with just the Professor here. But as expected, it's going to be a pretty tough battle, so I'm using anything I can get my hands on. Uh, I see it now. It's not going to land that easily. Uh-oh, this is bad. <laughs> Benegas. I better keep my distance. I'll use this chance to attack. Got him. That's scary. He's invincible for a moment here. I like to think that this symbolizes how Sakurai wants all the other characters to die in favor of Fire Emblem. Good one. <laughs> if I do this, like this, or like so. No anti air, huh? There. The soccer ball. Hey Sakurai, I see you down there. Hey man. How you doing? Good. There's mom. See, it's his. It's his face. It, it's his face cam. You're in a good spot, mom. <laughs> My hand doesn't point in that direction. Ah, I shouldn't have taken that. Gardevoir. Well, I guess no one uses projectiles. <laughs> did, At this point, it doesn't Did he really pronounce it Gardevoir? I feel Let's like see. Do I have? Uh, this ball. Is there an see, easy way for me to do this? I don't want to mess. But I mustn't give up. I don't want to mess up my face cam. I can't waste the chance. But I also, I, I do want to put my face cam next to his, but I, I don't want to mess ball. mine up. Yes, got it. Now, what are you charging up for? I like how they modeled all of these characters. Whack. For the background, but yet the the big final Go smash. Take the hammer, uh, but it's mine. Although I'm scared, I might get hit with a counter. You could probably state. duplicate the scene. I hit him. Well, yeah, but then I'm duplicating the whole scene. I was trying I just, to fight. I just need the, the alone, webcam. But what matters is that I won. Good game. It can be fun to play like this, especially in tag team, so I think it's a good idea to try imposing different types of challenges on yourself. The end. I mean, it's too late now. Now, about the additional music. Since it's from the Fire Emblem series, we'll be adding each of the new tracks to all the Fire Emblem stages. 
There are already a lot of Fire Emblem tracks in the game. Our selection this time has been made taking those existing tracks into consideration. Eleven songs are being added. Okay, at least it's not that many. This includes an arrangement of the main theme in both Japanese and English. And only two new arrangements. Well. We're also adding in a new spirit board. It includes the house leaders among some of the other popular characters. Hope. Sothis is legend class. Legend. Also, there's a new classic mode route, a heroic legacy, which is designed to let you enjoy classic Fire Emblem stages from throughout the series history. Because we definitely got some. The final games. battle is against Master Hand and Crazy Hand. Wow. You'll find that something pretty amusing happens, so look forward to that. Do I look now amused? Fighter costumes. Please take a look. Do I look amused, Sakurai? Yes! Yes! I don't know who that is! I thought it was the guy from Assassin's Creed for a second. God. God, what did I do? What did I do? Why have you forsaken me? Yeah, now we're on to the real good stuff here. And play as Mega Man EXE. <gasps> Can't wait for this to be more exciting than uh, be talked about more. Oh, includes new music track and he shoots with his finger. Yep, this is going to be the new Sans. Everybody's going to be like, Woo, Cuphead! And also there was a new fighter, I guess. Yeah, I'll probably... I'll, I'll, I'll get Cuphead. He looks... This time, we're releasing a Cuphead costume. And for those of you who purchased the Cuphead costume, an additional song will be added. It's called Floral Fury, and it's the theme that plays when fighting Cagney Carnation. I hope you enjoy these as well. <laughs> After purchasing a costume, I recommend using the sharing feature. If someone has created a Mii Fighter, you can play using the costume it's wearing immediately after you download it. And now, on to the Amiibo. The color palette for Dark Samus looks pretty good, doesn't it? Dark Samus and Richter are planned for release on Friday, January 17th. I probably could have just moved my chat over, like, over here. <laughs> and now, with the addition of Violet, the fighter's pass is finally complete. The lineup was Joker, Hero, Banjo and Kazooie, Terry Bogard, and Violet. There was like a hype spike, right? From more than 70 fighters, only five have been added. But I must say, this game has always been an exceptional experience. And since the roster was already so large to begin with, right from the start, we intended to make the most out of the new gameplay mechanics and so on. There really were a lot of new mechanics, weren't there? When we add a new fighter, we don't simply make their attacks or their movements a little different. Instead, we try to offer you a whole new style of play. As I stated, we'll continue to release more DLC fighters down the line. I had thought that one or two might suffice, but, well, have a look.
What? Oh. Six more. Looks like there will be one more fighter than last time. For this reason, we will be releasing the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume 2. It will be available for pre-purchase on the date shown, so please keep an eye out. And now that it's official, we intend to move ahead with development. Yeah, after the course, Fire Emblem like last character, time, the content I don't know if I'm going to pre-purchase it. And I'm personally very sorry that we have to release Fighters Pass Volume 2 when the details have yet to be revealed. Like this last this time, Fire Emblem character is exactly why I didn't purchase the whole Fighter Pass. It. Furthermore, the new additions have already been decided. Even if I receive many requests regarding potential candidates on Twitter, I'm afraid it would be very hard to consider them. <laughs> You're still gonna get them, dude. But I still hope you'll look forward to it. I, I, I mean, I'm not saying that's a good thing, We're but... We're also including a bonus with Fighters Pass. <laughs> but you're still gonna get them. Last time, it was a Rex costume. But this time, here's what we have. Okay. Plays the old man. Oh. It's a Mii Fighter costume for Mii Sword Fighter. The ancient soldier gear from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. This will not be for sale individually, so it can only be acquired as part of Fighter's Pass Volume 2. Oh, never mind. We're gonna add a ninth? Gonna add a ninth Fire Emblem? It's been reported that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the highest selling fighting game in the world. Personally, I don't know if it counts as simply a fighting game, but I guess it's seen as a fighting game around the world. It seems like Street Fighter 2 was in the lead for a while, but now Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has surpassed it in total sales. I mean, you put Ryu in the game. However, I'm not sure if this is accurate. There were five versions of Street Fighter 2, or six to seven if we really want to get into the weeds. Plus, there's the arcade versions and the 25 ports to other systems, so I don't know if that's been accounted for. Also, I don't know if that really qualifies as one game. It's up for discussion. So, who knows? But when it comes to a single piece of software, it seems like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is number one. Although, I still don't know if it can really be called just a fighting game. I feel like it's become more than a fighting game, some sort of celebration of gaming or something else entirely. Also, I feel a deep attachment to the five DLC fighters. <laughs> I, the first I thought Fighters about Pass it. just wrapped up. I thought about it. it I decided, decided there would be more DLC. I decided not to say it, <laughs> which means <laughs> no breaks for me. But then y'all said it anyway. I plan so to keep working hard. So I hope you can continue to support us. That's it. Thank you. Well, like I said, if you're a fan of Fire Emblem, I apologize for dunking on it. Like, like I said, the games themselves, I, I don't, I don't really have any real problem with the games themselves. I mean, I don't know. It might be a bit too anime waifu these days for me, but um, I guess my problem is that it's just over repped at this point. I know that's such a fanboy complaint, but. I mean, we got eight dudes at this point. I'm pretty sure that's more than Pokemon, which is a bit silly, I think. I don't know. Either way, what's what's done is done, I suppose. Uh, but better luck, better luck in Fighter Pass Six, Fighter Pack Six, whatever the heck. Um. Well, uh, thank you for watching. This is my first Nintendo Direct. I mean, it wasn't a Direct, really, but the you know coverage of sorts. I mean, I'll probably do more in the future. Just because, you know, it's, it's fun to hang out and it's fun to, like, have live reactions to stuff. All that. But, uh, but now... I might, you know, get something to eat, go back to bed or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for tuning in, though.